Hello, so here, welcome to a new video tutorial. In this video, we are going to be working on NetApp NAS Laboratory. So we are going to be working on several exercises for this tutorial. As you can see here on my screen, this is the lab that we will be working today. Understand and manage NetApp own tap NAS technologies. So let's click on connect. And here it is, the RTP session. First exercise, create new aggregate on each cluster. Also, let's open the GUI. We have to go to Chrome browser. And because of the lab settings, it is already in here. Um, the URL clusterwen.demo.netapp.com and also the the admin credentials are already pre-filled here. We just click on sign in. And just one step before going uh, on the aggregate exercises, let's take a look on the notes. Okay, so this particular uh, laboratory is is composed of two nodes. So uh, let's continue. The first step in order to create an aggregate, we have to go to the storage menu, then click on aggregates. Here we can see two aggregates and we are going to be creating two new aggregates. But what is an aggregate? If this is going to be just a simple explanation. Aggregate is a group of disks on a node and a node can host multiple aggregates. So let's create a new one. Here we are going to skip uh, this wizard and we are going to create it manually. So following um, the lab guide, the name of this particular aggregate is going to be this one. I'm just copying and pasting to get it faster. Aggregate one underscore cluster one underscore zero one. This type is going to be SSD and we are going to select the node one. Number of disk is going to be five. Uh, whenever you create an aggregate, you have to select a right configuration. Here is already pre-selected with right DP. Right DP is the uh, right is a right six double parity configuration. And we are done. We just click on submit. Here we can see our new aggregate with a success uh, message. Let's create a second one, skipping again the wizard. And from here, uh, the name of the aggregate, we are just changing the last number. This type, selecting uh, node number two. And same steps. Five disks, and we can keep a uh, right TP. Next exercise, create a subnet. So now I'm shrinking uh, the storage menu and expanding the network menu. Now let's take a look on the lab guide. So first we have to go to network and then broadcast domains. Here we can see there is a uh, default broadcast domain. And what is a broadcast domain? Broadcast domain is a collection of ports that will have the same layer to network for both physical and virtual networks. And here we can see all the ports that belong to these particular broadcast domains. Uh, now let's go to subnets. And there is not a full subnet. We have to create a new one. Now let's just click on create. 
the name of the subnet is going to be demo subnet IP and mask. We are going to choose uh, uh, the lab guide IP address, which is this one, 192.168.0.0. And the IP addresses that will be part of the subnet, uh, we are able to enter an IP address range. And per lab guide, this is going to be that range. From IP address uh, finishing 131 to IP address finishing 139. The gateway is going to be the default gateway for this particular uh, network section, 192.168.0.100, sorry, dot one. Broadcast domain, here we have to click on browse and select the default broadcast domain. Okay, let's take a look on the lab guide. Okay, seems to be uh, everything that we need to configure here. These are all the ports that belong to that particular um, broadcast domain. Here you can see uh, both nodes in here and their corresponding ports. So here just we have to click on create. Subnet is here. And just a reminder, a subnet is a pool of IP addresses that you can specify when creating a leaf. Okay, next exercise. Okay, so here we are in the SVM sections. An SVM is a previously known as PServer. Uh, it's a logical storage server within a NetApp cluster. And this particular mm, SVMs uh, is the components that serves the data out to the storage clients. So let's create a new one. Click on create. And let's take a look on the lab guide. The name of this particular SVM is going to be SVM1. IP space, it's on the fall. We are not able to modify this for this particular um, lab. And we are going to choose the data protocols, SIFs, and NFS. In coding language, we can keep uh, the default UTF 8. And the aggregate, we have to choose the new aggregate that we just create. For the search domains, we are going to keep the default demo.netapp.com, and this is the, uh, well, the name server for DNS, which is already pre filled in here. Click on submit and continue. Now uh, we have just moved from enter SVM basic details to configure SIFs and FS protocols. So now let's take a look to the lab guide. Okay, first, uh, the first section is data lift configuration. Lift um, is for logical interface where all the data traffic is going to uh, flow from, from a storage client to our SPM. Uh, from here, we have to assign uh, an IP addresses for, the, for this particular connection. And we have to choose using a subnet. Here we are going to um, select our previously created subnet called demo. And we can keep the auto select IP address from the subnet option. We just click on OK. And now we have to choose a port. The port to choose is going to be from node 1 E0C. 
OK, click on OK. Now, save server configuration. Uh, the name of the server name is going to be SBM1, same as uh, SBM name. Active Directory, uh, we have to put here demo.netapp.com. Uh, we can keep uh, this parameter, cn equals computer. Administrator name of this particular uh, saves configuration is going to be administrator. Per lab guide, uh, password is going to be netapp1. This is uh, an optional configuration to create a volume and provision some storage, but uh, we are not uh, doing it right now. We will do it uh, later. OK. So let's continue to NIST configuration. This is for NFS, as you can see it here. Network Information Services. I think that's the meaning of NIST. And let's take a look to the lab guide. For the needs, we can keep um, um, default configuration as empty. Nothing to configure in here. Let's click on Submit and Continue. Let's see if everything is OK. The SIP server is being created. Great. Uh, now we have moved to the next step. Uh, we can choose never here. We don't need uh, to have that password there. OK, so now for SPM administration, let's see the lab guide. OK, so the password for the uh, SBM it's going to be NetApp123 is in here in the lab guide. Here we go. Click on Submit and Continue. Uh, this particular user is for managing the entire uh, SBM or B server. And the previously one that we create uh, for SIFs, that's, part, uh, that's only for on that particular SIFs configuration, the administrator user, I mean. So we can click here on Never. And this is a summary of what, of what has been created. Name of SPM, SPM1, and here we can see the protocols created. I mean, enable. And here we can see a uh, protocol configuration. Here we can see the administrator for CEPHs, which is called administrator, and the SBM administration, which we just changed the password for BS admin. Let's just click on OK. OK. So in this exercise, uh, we create this SBM, but uh, as you saw, there is only one live and the NetApp best practice is to configure a NAS live on both nodes so we for for having better availability so uh, during the SBN creation a single NAS live was created NetApp best practice is to configure a NAS live on both nodes in HA pair so that a client can access the SBM through uh, either node. To comply with that best practice, we will create a second left, second NAS leaf hosted into the other node in the same cluster. So let's go there. So we have to shrink the storage menu and we have to expand the network section. 
And let's follow up with the guide. Okay, the uh, correct option is network interfaces. And here you can see uh, uh, the leaf associated to, to our SBM, the one that was created during SBM creation. And now we have to create a second one. So for creating a second one, uh, we have to click here on create. Uh, the name of the new uh, leaf is going to be the same as the previous one. SBM1 underscore CIFS underscore NFS underscore leaf2. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, the role for this uh, leaf is going to be uh, for serving data. Here we have to choose our SVM and we have to select both protocols. Uh, we have to uh, check uh, the enable management access and now we have to proceed with the IP address assignation. So uh, the option to select is assign, uh, assign an IP address uh, from using a subnet. Here we have to choose the, uh, the demo subnet. And now for the port, we have to choose uh, the other node, which is called cluster 1-02 and port E0C. Let's follow up the lab guide. Yep, everything seems okay. Let's click on create. Now with this configuration, um, or data traffic can can flow through both nodes, not just the single one. Okay, for uh, for the next exercise is DNS delegation. So uh, we need to configure DNS delegation so that Linux and Windows clients can intelligently utilize all of SBN configured NAS libs. For this to work, the DNS server must delegate the responsibility of a DNS zone for the SBM host name. So let's go to it. We have to proceed with DNS delegation from SSH. Let's follow up the lab guide. Yep, it's here. So this is PuTTY, and because of the lab guide, Sorry, the lab environment is already uh, filling here. So we just click on cluster one, then load. Here you can see the information and click on open. So for this particular exercise, I am going to use a magnifier. Okay. We are going to log in as admin. As admin. Okay, one second. Okay, I think I got it. I am going to restart the session. Login as admin, password, NetApp. Okay, here we are. The first comment to insert, we are going to first make a show to see uh, the current configuration. I am going to copy the comment to make it faster. This is the command, network interface show, dash p server, uh, name of the uh, SBM that we just create and the fields that we want to see DNS zone comma address. So here we can see um, both leaves of the SBM. Uh, the one finishing with uh, IP address 32 and 31, but there is no DNS zone yet. 
So, in order to configure a DNS zone, we have to submit next command. I am copying it. This is the command network interface modify uh, server name, v server name, uh, the lift, lift number one, and the DNS zone name, which stands for uh, svm, svm1.demo.netapp.com. Uh, Okay, let's submit the same command now for lift number two. And let's see the show command. Here you can see the difference. Under DNS zone, we can see uh, these lifts, lift number one and lift number two, belongs to the same uh, DNS zone. Probably you can see it better in here. Um, lift number one and lift number two belongs to the same DNS zone. So this is um, this is how you configure a DNS delegation. So in order to test it, uh, let's open PowerShell. So it is here. I am going to perform an NS lookup to that particular SPM. Um, name of the SBM is SBM one dot demo dot netapp dot com. Yep. And here you can see uh, the answer from. Look at this. It's from uh, lift number two because of the IP address finishing on 132. Let's try a new NS lookup. And I'm seeing the same response. And here you can see the delegation after my third attempt. And now it's it's forwarding the the collection. Sorry, it's forwarding the traffic to the lift number one. So this is how delegation works. Uh, lift number one. I am going to. Take off the magnifier. So here you can see a response from lift one, lift two, lift two, lift one, lift two. So it's working as expected the DNS delegation. So next exercise configure SIFs and NFS. So in order to create our storage, first we have to configure our export policies. So let's shrink uh, this network section and let's expand the storage. If we go to the SBM options, sorry, SBM menu, here we can see the SBM that we just create, SBM1. And here we can see uh, the protocols enable, uh, green mark, which uh, means that everything is okay with those protocols. Click on SVM settings. And here we can see overall information about SIFs and NFS protocols. Here we can see ISCOSI and NFC, but those are for SAN, which we didn't enable yet. And this is the export policies. Uh, whenever you create an SVM, uh, it comes with a default export policy, but it has no access rules. So an export policy contains uh, uh, the rules for the storage clients that will access uh, the storage on depending of the of where this export policy is set on uh, every particular volume. Uh, for this scenario, we are going to create just a simple rule for all access. So inserting here 0.0.0 slash 0 will allow any client in our 
network um, and we'll be making them will be providing the access to mount any volume from, from the NetApp. So here we have to choose SIFs and NFS protocols, and we just hit on OK. If we take a look into the volumes, here we can see also a, a volume called SBM underscore, sorry, <laughs> a volume called SBM1 underscore root. This volume was also created during the SBM creation, and this particular volume uh, keeps the junction configurations and namespace of, for that particular SBM configuration as well. So it's not recommended to store any data in here, but for this lab, uh, we are just making it for um, for showing purposes, for demo purposes. So this particular um, volume is not accessible yet for uh, from anybody because uh, it's um, the namespace is not there yet. So let's take a look on the lab guide. Okay, so let's make this particular volume available for everyone. So we have to go to shares. And from here we have to click on create share. By the way, uh, this share are not supposed to be shared with the end users. This is all for internal NetApp um, purposes. Let's just click on Create Share. And now click on Browse. Um, this is all root BS uh, or BSM1 underscore root volume, which is the namespace. So we are sharing with the network all, all our NetApp uh, root namespace. We just click on uh, uh, OK and the shared uh, name will be NS root. And we just click on create. OK, so here we can see uh, the new the new shirt, right? If you click on edit here, uh, the storage admin will be able to modify all the permissions and options uh, like uh, this one. Show a snapshot, browsable, uh, things like that. But for this uh, scenario, we are not modifying anything here. Okay, next exercise, user mapping. So we are going to set up uh, username mapping so that Linux root accounts and the Windows demo administrator accounts, we have the same access to each other files. So we have to go to SPM. We click on or SPM, SPM settings. And here is the name mapping feature. There is no name mapping in here. We have to create a new one. Let's see the lab guide. Click on add. And this first one, this the first um, mapping is going to be from Windows to Unix. And the pattern is going to be demo administrator. And the replacement is going to be root. We just click on that. Great. Now let's follow with the second mapping. Now it's on reverse, Unix to Windows. Pattern comes from root. And the replacement is demo slash slash administrator. Okay, so now next exercise, validation of, of our storage clients. So uh, from Windows client, as you saw in the beginning, 
um, this is um, the namespace of our SPM SPM one dot demo dot netapp dot com and here we can see um, um, the and the first volume that we that was created already there you can see there is nothing in here no data for the end users and what if we create a new volume let's try it let's go to the storage menu click on volumes and here we can create a new flex volume uh, make sure that the SVM selected in here is the one that you want to update with a new volume create a flex volume here let's call it soul volume from aggregate we can choose uh, the aggregate that we created before and let's put it in 10 gigabytes for space here we can just hit on create and let's take a look from the junction paths so this particular soul volume has been created in the under the root namespace and we can we should validate that from here so let me uh, double click here again and voila here you can see now uh, my volume in here as a shared drive uh, from here you can unmount your shared drives i mean as a shared drive but you can keep the volume if you, if you just click here on unmount let me go back to my shared drive and nothing in there it's gone let's mount it again volume name soul volume here you are going to be uh, seeing uh, the available volume to mount let's click on mount and it's here now let's create a file in here new text document I am going to call it hello.txt hello from so okay this is my message let's click on save okay now let's validate uh, Linux client let's follow up the lab guide for uh, for Linux credentials okay I got it here so let's open a new SSH session and here you can see uh, the laboratory includes uh, a RL a RL Linux machine so let's click on load and then open it the user for this uh, Linux machine is root and the password is netapp1 okay here we are so now let's see um, the mounts that this particular linux machine has with the f command and here you can see all all these mounts are local okay now let's create a new directory for the for the upcoming nfs storage uh, we have to create that with mkdir command and it's going to be called SPM1. Okay. If, if we run an LS, here you can see uh, the. Uh, sorry, uh, here. <laughs> Let me put the magnifier here after creating the uh, the new directory spm1 here you can see it okay so now we have to add an entry for the nfs mount to the fs tab file this is the command let me copy it We're performing um, this statement to 
be part of the FSTA file. It's done. How can we validate it? With a grab. Let me copy that command. Grab SPM1, and we are looking for this particular um, keyword in the FSTA file. There you go. Here is the response. I'm magnifying it in case it's not that visible. Here you can see it. After performing a grip, uh, the same one has been found there. Okay, so now what is the next step? We have to mount all the file system listed in the, in the FSTA file. We can do that with mount command with dash A option. It's done. How can we validate it? With, uh, again, the F command. Here you can see it has been, it has been mounted. Great, so let's navigate into there with a CD command. Let's perform an LS. And here you can see my my shared drive listed here as a folder called Sol Volume. Let's go there. Let's perform an LS again. And here you can see my file hello.txt uh, okay here you can see it hello.txt is part of the of the shared drive or here in linux of the nfs sol volume and uh, with the cat we are going to be able to see uh, the contents of that file hello from sol so here is my message. Uh, let's try an update from here. Uh, let me open my file. And I'm just simply adding a, a new line so we can see it in a better format. OK, I just save the changes. Let me bring back uh, the Linux machine. And let's perform again a cat. And here you can see the changes. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for your time. This is it for the video.